In the last movie, we were looking at how to search files using Python code. And you can see all of my different movies if you go to my homepage, click on movies. Um, today, what I'm going to do is show you how to search a list in Python. Now, it works pretty much the same in Python 2 and Python 3. My code examples are in Python 3. Now, I'm going to take you to the schedule. Uh, now, we're currently in the fall semester. Uh, let's click on any of these links for my courses. Now, when we're looking at searching, we've, we've used files and searching, and I've got some uh, PowerPoint presentation here. And I've also got PDF. Let me just close that. I've also got PDF files here that uh, will give you a brief summary of files and exceptions and searching files. Um, currently, I want to talk about searching, specifically searching lists. So here we've got a PowerPoint presentation, but I'm going to go to this PDF. It'll be a bit quicker to load and you'll be able to monitor this on all your different devices. Right, so this is something completely different. And we're talking about searching in Python. And I'm going to introduce searching and talk about the sequential search today in this movie. Uh, in a later movie, I'll talk about the binary search. So let's introduce searching. So introduction to searching. Now, in programming, in computer science, searching and sorting are very important topics. And it's been estimated anywhere between 25% and 50% of all computer time in the commercial world is spent on searching and sorting data. So we're going to start off looking at the sequential search. Now the sequential search is also known as the linear search. You could use either. Um, it's very straightforward. It's very easy to um, program. And how does it work? Well, you start at the beginning of a sequence. So you could be at the beginning of a, a list and you go through each item in the list one by one in the order that they are in the list until you find the item that you're looking for. So it's very similar to looking for a word in a dictionary. A dictionary is a book where all the words are listed in order from uh, letter A all the way to Z and against each word is a description of the meaning of the word. So for example we have the word bliss which is a noun, it means perfect happiness. Now, if you have a dictionary, you're guaranteed to find any word in that dictionary, as long as it exists in the dictionary. If you start at the beginning, so you start at page one, you go through every page in the book, you will find the word if it is in the dictionary. So a linear search requires you on average to look at half of the elements in the list. And in the worst case, you, must have, you might have to go through the entire list to find the item that you're looking for, if it is in the list at all. So what are the advantages of a sequential search or a linear search? Well, it's very easy to program. It's very easy to implement as a program. Uh, you do not need to sort your list or your sequence. <coughs> And we do have an animation here. I'm going to click on this, see if it goes to the... I mean, there it is. So I'm currently using the Chrome browser, so uh, on my Linux machine. So here we've got the animation, and you can get to that directly from the, from the PDF. So here is the animation at this address. Uh, you should be able to just click on this, and it will take you to the animation. Uh, thank you to Daniel Liang for uh, programming this and making the animation. So what we have here is we're going to... The key is the number that we're searching for. And you can type in any key there. And when we click on step, the 
animation will start at the beginning of the list. Lists in other languages are arrays. So here we've got a list. Uh, the numbers you'll notice, just random numbers, not in any particular order. And we're going to enter the key, which is the number that we want to search for. When we click on step, it's going to start at the beginning and compare the key with the item in the list and to see if they are equal. If not, it'll go on to the next item in the list. So let's step. So here at index 0, 8 is not equal to 27, so we'll step to the next. And 8 is not 3, so the i is the index number starting at 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. The little cross there means it has not been found, the key has not been found. And here we're going all the way through the list and number 8 is not in the list. So here it returns a value of minus 1 to indicate that the key is not found. Click on OK and let's reset the list. This time let's change the key to number 21. We know that is in the list. Oh, actually, the number 8 is in the list, so let's go through this list again. So when we step, it goes through each item in the list looking for the number 8. And in this case, the number 8 is at index 7. And so it reports that the key is found index 7. OK. So this animation is showing you how the linear search works. So the linear search, also known as sequential search. This is an animation pros, uh, programmed by Daniel Leon. And here we can see how the linear search algorithm works. Let's go back to my PDF. Now it doesn't go back to the correct page, so I'll just go down a little bit. So this is the animation we just looked at, if you want to type that in or click here. Now I've got a sequential search program that is one of my example programs. This is program 10-01.py. Now to find the example program, to save you typing this in, just go to my home page here and click on Python uh, example programs this is where all the videos are example programs and I'm going to press key F3 to search for program 10-01 and here it is so let's open up Python now in my last program I was searching a file and here is my program, my last program, which is a search on a file, file searching in Python. And this one is searching a file called uh, words.txt. And in this case, it's searching for the word hello in the file. Now, this is the subject of a previous video. So if you want to see the explanation for this one, please go to my videos and so if you go to my home page, click on videos, you'll find it there. So I'm going to close this one and I'm just going to delete that. So let's copy the content. Uh, we don't need to copy the comments. So I'm just going to copy the code itself into my program here. Just make sure it's correct. Right, and there we go. So this is similar to the animation. What we've done, list one is a list and I've made it with, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 integers in this list, each one separated by a comma. And the first one is index 0, so the index goes from 0 to 8. Now, we create the list, and then I ask the user to enter a number. And the number they enter will be on a new line. I force the new line with this line feed escape character or escape sequence. So when the program runs, they'll be entering their number on a new line. And here I'm setting found to be a signal to say whether the number has been found. So we set that to zero. We could set it to any number we like. <coughs> or we could set it to true or false. So. Here I'm going through every item in the list 
and if the number to find is equal to the item in the list then I'm going to print the number to find and I'm also going to say the index that that number has been found. Then I'll set found to 1 and after this loop completes if found is equal to 0 then the number has not been found. So let's run it and see what happens. So let's look for number 11 in the list which of course is the first item in the list at index 0. So when I run I'm going to type in, let's have a look, let's bring that down a bit. So I'm going to type in number 11 and it tells me that 11 is at index 0 which of course I knew. Let's search for number 1 which is at index 7. This is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is index 7. So let's run the code again. And the number 1 is the number to find. And it finds that one at index number 7. So notice here I'm using the index method. This is a list method, which you can use with any list. The index method will return the index of whatever argument you give it. So the argument is going to be the integer, which is in the list. So the number to find is whatever we search, whatever number we're searching for. If that index is in the list, it will give you the index. So let's run. And let's have another number. Let's have number 99. Now that number is not found. So in this case, uh, the number is not found. So um, we didn't see the index because the number is not in the list. Let's run again. Let's try number 27, which is at index number 1. Now there it is. Very simple code. Now found, I could have set found to false. The keyword false. Notice it is a keyword, capital F-A-L-S-E. And here I can say that if we do find the number, we'll set found to true. And if found is equal to true. Oh, no, that's found is not equal to true. Let's say not equal to true. Then number not found. So we'll just show you that this works. So let's look for number 36 at index 2. There you go. So let's look for number uh, let's let's look search for a number that's not present in the list and this one number not found now so here I'm using false and true to signal whether the value is found or not now a shortcut for let's have a look uh, hmm. No, I think I'll leave it at that point. So here we have a simple program. It's using uh, a list of integers and we're entering a value, an integer, for the number to find and we're passing this through the for loop. Uh, if Now actually if we have, uh, if we found the number 11 we don't really need to continue searching the list. So if we found the value, we can just break out of the list. We don't really need to continue searching if we've already found it. Let's just check that this is still working. So a reminder, the break statement will break out of a loop. So once you've found the value, let's just break out of the loop. We don't need to keep continue searching because we've already found the value. So let's now run this. And let's just double check it's still working as expected. Let's look for the number 51. And there it is, it's at index 4. So this program runs a little bit faster because it doesn't continue to search after the value has been found. 
So just a reminder to see this example program, go to my example program page, which you can find from my uh, homepage at andalson.net and all the videos you can find there as well. So this is a simple program. So one of the advantages of the sequential or linear search is it is very easy to implement as this program shows.